took it away and is fouled by Alan Pulido. Oh, Pulido just And Pulido with some up. afters right in front of the referee who goes to the back pocket and Alan Pulido gets a straight red card. Welcome to a historic edition of Instant Replay. It's the first ever League's Cup edition in which we'll take a closer look at all the controversial refereeing decisions from the first match day of League's Cup 2023. And let me tell you folks, there is an absolute laundry list, so strap in, get ready, and break out your law book. We start in Philadelphia. Tijuana in town, four plays to hit, and the first is a dog so red so to Nicholas Diaz of Cholos. 18th minute, Julian Carranza in behind, down goes Carranza, the shot goes off frame, and folks, this looks like a foul, and referee Ocean Nation calls it a foul. And since he calls the foul, he has to produce the red card for dog so, and since he says the foul incurred inside the area, it's also a penalty. Tijuana's frustrated. My guess is they probably think the foul is soft, and they also think this occurred outside the area, and I can see the point on both. But here's where I stand. For me, this is a foul. Watch Diaz's arm. He pushes, he outstretches that arm. If there's just the contact on the back, he might get away with it, but when you have the push, that's where the foul occurs. And since that push occurs inside the penalty area, the actual foul in my opinion, that would make it a penalty in addition to dog so. I think Nation got this one right. And I know VAR Oscar Macias Romo got this right. Julian Carranza's goal in the 26th minute was originally called off for offside. But watch this replay. Carranza is onside when the original cross is played from the left flank. Therefore, he is onside even though he's quote unquote in an offside position when the ball deflects off the Tijuana defender. Though the flag went up on the field, in the end, the crew got the call right. This is a good goal. All right, go to the 49th minute. Time to work with some context clues. Olivia Mbizo is called for a foul on the edge of the area. Originally, Nation says no PK, but Romo calls him to the monitor and they end up with a foul inside the area and a penalty kick. Upon viewing it the first time, I thought, boy, it sure looks like that contact occurred outside the area, or at least debatably so. Not clear and obvious, right? Only when you look at Mbizo's feet, the left foot is inside the box and the right foot is further inside the box when he's kicking out. I may not be able to say that it's 100% inside the area where the contact occurs, but I'm at a solid 98, 99%, and for me, that is clear and obvious as the referee crew also saw. Last play from this match, another dog so red so on Tijuana, 58th minute. Kevin Belanta chasing down Mikel Ua. Belanta puts in the challenge, Ua gets a touch, or maybe there's a touch from both, and Ua goes down. Nation produces the red card. Denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. And while Belanta is frustrated, I agree with Nation on this one. If you slow it down, in my opinion, you can see that Ua is the one that gets the touch here. Belanta's foot comes in under the Philadelphia Union forward and takes him down. That's a foul. The question is, is it denial of a goal scoring opportunity? Remember, there are four buckets that need to be checked, and one of them is the likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball. Ua's touch is pretty long. I don't think he's going to keep or gain control of this ball. But ultimately, what forced him into the touch is the foul from Belanta. So in my opinion, all things considered, full justice, dog so red so is the right call. All right, how about an obvious one? Cincinnati Sporting Kansas City, 30th minute, Alan Pulido, what are you thinking? I know he was frustrated. He was in a little clash with Yerson Mosquera, and Mosquera pushed him just a little bit but you can't jump up and lead with the head into Mosquera's head. That's clear violent conduct. It's a non-soccer play. It's non-negligible force into the face and head. That's a sending off all day, every day. How about two clear PK calls as well? 68th minute, Alvis Powell gets that arm out. Ball hits the arm, a natural position. Yes, Alvis, that is going to be called. And then with Cincinnati trailing 3-2 in the 95th minute, second half stoppage time, Danny Rosero put out the chicken wing. You can see that little movement out toward the flight of the ball. That is deliberate, and that is a penalty kick. Well done to the referee crew in this game, led by Mexican Daniel Quintero Huitron. I'm just an amateur referee on YouTube, but I'm not going to be quite so complimentary to the crew in the NYCFC Atlas game. Just one play to look at, and it is a crucial one. 87th minute, Justin Hack, New York City's own, scores the tying goal for NYCFC. It's given on the field, but after a video assistant referee, Oscar Macias Romo, reviews it and sends it to Brian Lopez, the ref, they take it off for offside, and I just can't understand it. There is a key principle we all need to understand with offside. Just because you're in an offside position does not mean you've committed an offside offense. 
And make no mistake, as you watch this play, you will see Justin Hack in an offside position, but that does not mean he should be penalized. The moment you have to judge Justin Hack's offside position is the moment the ball is flicked on to him. And in that situation, he is in an onside position. Even if you want to debate that, it's certainly not clear and obvious that he's offside, which it would have to be to reverse the call on the field. Atlas's coach didn't like all the folks coming out saying, hold on, this is onside, but I'm going to join the chorus. This goal, in my opinion, should have stood. All right, deep breath. Back to some easy handball calls. Columbus St. Louis, 27th minute, Lucas Bartlett. Arm goes out. Yeah, it feels harsh, unlucky. It's bang, bang. It's so close, but that's an unnatural position and a handball. Well done to the referee on that one. And well done to referee Guillermo Pacheco Larios for having a little bit of self-control in the RSL Seattle game. Yaimar and Chicho Arango got into a tussle, but I don't see any red card offenses here. No violent conduct for me, and Larios keeps his red in the back pocket. In the end, the two Colombians hug it out. But Marcelo Silva cannot hug this one out in the 60th minute. This is a horror tackle on Raul Ruiz Diaz. It is the definition of serious foul play. Look at how high it is into the shin, straight legs, studs exposed on a planted foot, that is excessive force and it's endangering the safety of an opponent. And Larios was absolutely right to go straight red here. Serious foul play, adios Marcelo Silva. Just one play in Orlando, Houston, first half stoppage time. It's the penalty kick for the Houston Dynamo. Griffin Dorsey goes down under pressure from Rafa Santos of Orlando and, oh boy, I, yeah, I'm not seeing any contact there. Just gonna throw that out there. Philip Duich, the referee, calls the penalty on the field, so you need clear and obvious evidence to overturn. I know there's not a smoking gun angle that shows there's no contact, or minimal contact, I guess, but I don't in any way believe this is a penalty foul. I don't think this is a foul at all. If you're a Dynamo fan, player, coach, or front office member, you're happy Dorsey drew this one, but in my opinion, this is not a penalty kick. This foul by Edward Bayo in the Austin Mazatlan game is a penalty kick, 61st minute. From the first angle, I thought, oh boy, did Ethan Finley go down easy here? Maybe even dive. But then when you find another angle, the one from behind, you can see that Bayo's heel goes into the heel of Finley taking him down. So well done to the referee and the crew on that one. Whoo, deep breath. Only four more to go. Dallas Charlotte, 58th minute. Carol Swiderski goes down. It's a penalty kick on Facundo Quinone. Quinone is saying, hold on, I didn't do anything on that play. And I mostly agree, but there is enough contact on the top of Swiderski's foot for Jorge Camacho, the referee, to call the foul. And once he calls that foul, given the contact, the VAR, Diego Montonio Robles is not going to recommend for review. So while it's a little bit soft, I understand the call on the field. I am, however, just a little bit confused by the fact that there wasn't punishment for Giovanni Jesus, the FC Dallas outside back who, as you watch closely here, Sure appears to get a hand around the neck of Ashley Westwood of Charlotte. No red card produced by Jorge Camacho, the referee. And Jesus is a lucky, lucky boy. For me, that's a red card for violent conduct. And to be honest, I was a little confused initially by the red card to Michael Boxall of Minnesota for violent conduct against Puebla in the 26th minute. I was focused on the grabbing. Boxall has a lot of fabric in his hands on this one, and I thought, huh, did he throw him down? What happened here? But on the third or fourth viewing, I finally saw it. Watch Michael Boxall's right arm as he's holding with the left. That is a punch, a strike into the back of the Puebla player. It's off the ball. For me, clearly excessive force and brutality, and that makes it violent conduct. Well done to the VAR, Diego Montaño Robles, on this one. It was hard to pick out, but he caught it, and we got to get that stuff out of the game. Final play on this show, Pueblo thought they had a consolation goal, and it was for not. Robles caught on video review that the ball went out of bounds, and you can see right here that is clear and obvious. That goal should not have stood, and it didn't. All right, that's it for us from match day one of League's Cup. Are you tired? I'm a little bit tired, but probably not as tired as my editor, Phil Ivanko, who put all of this together and then made me look as good as I can possibly look. And of course, big thanks to my producer, Rich Hernandez. I may not always agree with you, Rich, but I love you, man. As always, if you see something, say something. Let me know if there are any plays we need to review on this show, and we'll see you next time.